the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Welcome everyone to Merton College Chapel for this celebration of the Eucharist. A particular welcome to our celebrant and preacher this evening, Bishop Rowan Williams. Bishop Rowan is no stranger to Merton. While Archbishop of Canterbury, he was the college's visitor. And then when he moved from that post in 2012, the college elected him to an honorary fellowship. It's a very great pleasure to welcome you back to Merton with Jane this evening. We gather at this Eucharist, as at every Eucharist, to give thanks. This evening, our particular focus is thanksgiving for the gift of creation. So as we begin, let us call to mind those ways in which we have failed to reverence creation as God's gift, and instead have treated it as our own possession. And as we call to mind our sins, let us ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind which, with which the water swarms and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, 
and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with the seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowd, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. One thing that comes through very clearly in that story of the creation which we heard a few moments ago is that God does not make things and leave them to sit still. God doesn't make a series of objects which he then puts on a shelf to be displayed to an admiring audience of angels. God makes things that live and grow, that feed, that produce, that generate newness. God makes a world which unfolds in time. From the very start, the division of light and darkness marks the passage from one day to another. The earth and the seas are instructed to bring forth life. Living creatures in turn are told to go and multiply. Human beings are told to multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Back to that in a moment. But the point is, that a story has been initiated. Creation may take with its creator a pause for breath on the seventh day, but then it lives, then it generates. It doesn't sit still. And we, as part of creation, 
are therefore called on to act. We don't simply sit there saying, I am created. Thank you very much. To be created is to be called on to act, to feed and generate and grow and change. It's a point which you might find reflected in one of Jesus's parables about the rich man who gives different amounts of money to three slaves and is hardest on the one who simply buries what he's been given so that it'll stay safe. That's not our calling. To be created is to be active, to make a difference, to bring meaning into the world. And that's perhaps where we ought to go back to that phrase about subduing the world and having dominion over it. Those verses which have given the Jewish Christian tradition such a very bad name among those concerned about the environment, with quite good reason. As if our job as human beings was simply to exploit the rest of creation as ruthlessly and systematically as we can. We may not have learned a great deal in the last century or so, but we have learned one or two things about that, though not fast enough. But that's another sermon. Now, the point is, as we see in the following chapter of Genesis, that Adam, the earthling, the creature who is called out at the end of the creative process to round it off, Adam gives names to those other creatures God has made. Adam gives a shape to the world that Adam is in. And if Adam is said to have dominion in the world and is also said to be in the image of God, we have to think of that dominion over the rest of the world being exercised in a godlike way. And how is God's power and dominion exercised by nurturing life, by making a world that renews itself all the time in freedom and generativity, in gift and abundance. So that if we are made in the image of God, and if we're called to have dominion over the rest of the world, then the dominion we exercise must not be an exploitation, an authoritarian dominance, but like God's own power, it must be a quest to bring life and nurture life, to help things to be more themselves. So when we've heard all that about what it is to be a creature, what it is to be created and dependent on God, in the sense that we are drawing life from God and letting that life loose in the world, it's as if Jesus' words in the Gospel today are a little bit of a caution, almost a redressing the balance. There are things, says Jesus to his friends, there are things in the world you actually can't do anything about. When it rains, you get wet, even if you're a saint. You are subject to the world you're in. You may think you have dominion, but actually, you don't have much choice about some things. You can worry as much as you like, but it won't make you an inch taller. You can worry about tomorrow, but tomorrow's not here, and you can't actually change tomorrow until tomorrow arrives. So we may be called to be creative, generative, life-giving beings as humans, but we're also reminded rather sharply that we're not actually God. That ought, incidentally, to be good news for us because it's a rather formidable job to take on. And it has, as they say, been done. We're not God. We are God's image. We're called on to reflect a gift that we've been given and we reflect it as we engage with the challenge, the difficulty, and the unpredictability of the world. The worst fiction we can tell ourselves 
is that we are in control. The worst fiction we can tell ourselves is anything that shores up that dangerous myth that we are the authors of our own identity. You may have noticed reports in the newspapers a couple of weeks ago about an anxious and earnest academic who made the case that we should never give one another advice on any subject whatever, because each individual is the author of their life. One might debate that philosophically at some length, but from a Christian point of view, that is surely the very opposite of good news. The burden of making ourselves up from moment to moment the burden, so to speak, of constantly revising our social media profile as if from scratch. It's not exactly the promise of a reconciled, loving and at-home life. Certainly not much of a prospect for relating creatively to the rest of the world either. And so here we are, stuck in this very strange position as human beings. You may have noticed that being human is precisely something of a balancing act. Not only a balancing act between being an angel and being an animal, but also a balancing act between understanding that we're not in charge and understanding that we're called to act. To put it rather epigrammatically, we're called to make a difference and we can never make all the difference. And that's all right because the particular kind of difference we're called to make as human beings is in engagement with, embrace of, respect for what lies around us. When we give thanks for creation, our creation and the creation that surrounds us, we give thanks that this vast, impenetrably complex system of life in which we are born is one that continues to offer life and hope and possibility in ways we cannot control or predict. And we give thanks for this and we open our imaginations to this. We keep a sharp eye open for that delusion that we can make all the difference and yet, we come back again and again to what the first chapter of Genesis seems to be saying to us. And remember, you can make a difference. You can be creative. And you can't be the creator. And in case this seems just an abstract and impossible place to stand, balancing on the tightrope, we are reminded that actually we're not trying to do this unaided. The most remarkable claim that our Christian faith makes is that the creator, when the creator sets out to remake, restore and reconcile the world, acts from within creation, not outside. God the creator embraces the condition of being a creature like you and me. God becomes the great, 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 great grandchild of Adam. God becomes Jesus Christ. In the life and death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, God directly embraces all the contradictions, the tensions and the frailties of being human. God makes a difference by respecting the world God has made. God makes a difference by loving and embracing that world and transforming it from within. Not standing at a distance, not manipulating or controlling it, and yet taking the risk, the risk of suffering, loss, hell, by entering into it, reworking it from within. And that is the life in which we are rooted as Christians. 
a life embracing creation, respecting creation, working with creation, finding how we are to make a difference which brings life and not death, harmony and not discord. So as we give thanks for our createdness, we can renew our prayer and our hope that we shall learn from our being together in the body of Christ how we might with confidence walk that tightrope, how we might measure our decisions and our policies, individual and social, by that kind of standard. Are we bringing life? Are we letting things be more themselves? Are we building convergence and harmony in our world rather than discord, violence and exploitation? Are we behaving like creatures who know their dependence and who know their dignity? Jesus of Nazareth depends completely on his father. He has nothing of his own, he says, only what has been given to him. And yet, Jesus of Nazareth turns the created world on its axis towards communion, reconciliation, peace, and love. In him, we rediscover every time we pray, every time we think about our Christian identity, we rediscover that fusion of dignity and dependence. And we learn again what it is to be in the image of the Creator who has made us to create in his name, acknowledging his gift and sharing it so as to bring life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Creator God, we give you thanks for the gift of life which we share with all creatures and for the rhythms and relationships which sustain our common existence. And we pray for all who are working to restore and protect those rhythms in the face of climate change. Renew in each of us the gifts of hope and innovation as together we affirm the goodness of your creation in our own lives. 
Lord, hear us. As we give thanks for creation, we also pray for the life of the church as we seek to bear witness to the place of all people in the ecology of your grace. Sustain Justin, our Archbishop, and Stephen, our Bishop, in their ministries, and breathe new life into the relationships within the Church of England, the Anglican Communion, and across the denominations, as together we seek to serve your world in love and faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Creator God, we pray for those places where the good order of your creation is obscured by human structures and natural disasters. Comfort the people of Turkey and Syria after last week's earthquake and strengthen the people of Chile fighting wildfires. Bring peace to Ukraine, Russia, Peru, and all places disordered by war, and guide all who seek to bring relief and aid to those who need it most. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, hear us. As evening falls, we pray for all who are sick or anxious tonight in body, mind, or spirit, for all who are struggling to trust that they are held in your abundant generosity, for all who seek to live out that generosity as they care for the needs of others. And we pray for all who have gone before us and all who mourn them, trusting that all are held in the endless creativity of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In a moment of silence, we hold before you now the prayers on our own hearts tonight. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. you turn to pages 17 and 18 of the booklets, you'll find the schedule of services for this week and some other notices. Our girl choristers are taking a well-earned half-term break, so there are two choral services in the coming week on Tuesday and Thursday evening, sung by the College Choir. Our chapel charity this term is Young Minds, a mental health charity. You can find the collection plate in the anti-chapel after the service. When it comes to the time for Holy Communion, everyone is most welcome to come forward. If you normally receive communion, you're very welcome to do so here, or if you'd prefer, come forward for a blessing. And then after the service, everyone is welcome to join us for a drink in the anti-chapel. We sing the offertory hymn, Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
thanks to the Lord our God. give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to a new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share.
God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. God, our Creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be with you. And also with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who has made heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Amen. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.